revealing far too much about myself right now. Okay. Hey friends, welcome to my channel or back to my channel. My name is Ashley Audison. I hope you are having a fantastic day today. If not, I hope it gets better. Recently, I did a short where I went through all of the books that I read last year and I just said yes, no, or eh. And a lot of you were like, can you go a little bit further into why you would recommend or not recommend these books? So this is that. This is gonna be a long video. Well, let's get into it. The first one is The Golden Spoon by Jessa Maxwell. My recommendation was no. Sorry. I understand how much time goes into writing a book and I don't wanna discount anybody's hard work, but in general, I found that this book was very predictable. It was an interesting concept. It was basically, you took the British baking show put it in America and make it a murder mystery. My expectation with reading this book was to be gripped and honestly questioning at every single turn. Who is the murderer? Who did it? But I knew like halfway through the book. As soon as the murder took place, I knew exactly who did it and who was their accomplice. And when it was revealed at the end, I wasn't surprised. And so that's why it was a bit of a lackluster book for me and why I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, if you want to read it, you can read it. I, you, have, you are a human being and you have choices. Next on the list is the Serpent and the Wings of Night series. This was super popular on Book Talk, and so I went in with some expectations thinking that it would be amazing, but it wasn't. Once again, it was super predictable. The magic, meh. the romance story, meh. it was easily forgettable and a huge letdown. Next, we have Trick. It was another book recommended on Book Talk, and it was a lot more spicy. I had a lot of spice, and I don't mind spice. Sometimes I look forward to spice, but this spice was, this was not the spice that I like. One of my personal preferences with a spicy book is that there is plot, easy to follow plot, not just some random pluty plots with mostly spice. I, so that's why I didn't care for it. If you just want spice, that's a book for you. Next we have Murtog, which I highly recommend. It is very, very good. I'm a huge fan of the Aragon series. They were coming out when I was a kid. And so it was really kind of cool to jump back into the world of Allegasia through Murtog's point of view. That being said, go into it reading that it's a young adult book. It's not gonna be adult level writing. It's gonna be geared towards a younger audience. And that was fine with me because I like dragon. Prior of the Orange Tree was a book that I also recommended. Cause dragons. I mean, you put dragons in a book, I'm gonna read it. What I really appreciated about Prior of the Orange Tree was the magic system and the world building was just very complete. I also appreciated that the relationships within the book were not cliche or easy to guess. All around, you can easily get lost in Prior of the Orange Tree. It's not a young adult novel. So don't go in thinking that you can just sit down and read it like it's junk food because you're, you're gonna have to use your brain. I had to use my brain a couple of times and it made my head hurt, but then I was just like, no, this is good. We don't want smooth brain. Finlay Donovan is killing it. I only read the first book. There are multiple, it's a series, but the first book was so freaking good. <laughs> Think murder mystery, comedy, all of it rolled up into one anxiety riddled 30 plus year old woman. Fantastic, I could not put it down. It was it was so freaking good. And I just loved how this, this woman kept trying to like get out of a situation and then kept getting thrust into it. It was hilarious. Albeit very like dark humor, hilarity. Edge Dancer by Brandon Sanderson, super, super good. Anything, Brandon Sanderson, caveat, he's my favorite author. So I am going to be a little bit biased because I have not been disappointed with any book of his that I have read. And Edge Dancer takes place within the Stormlight Archive world. And the character is just so lovable. I love how she loves food because I love food, so I related to that. Edge Dancer, very, very good. Very good world building, insanely well, like genius magic system. I mean, I'm curious what goes on in Brandon Sanderson's mind, how he comes up with all of these things. So Edge Dancer, highly recommend. Branson Garcia. Uh, so this book was written by my cousin, so I'm a little bit biased, but at the same time, I thought it was really well written. The best way that I can describe it is Percy Jackson meets pirates. So if you like pirates and you really like Percy Jackson, this is a book for you. The Wolf and the Woodsman. I admit that this book I did not finish. It's okay, sometimes we just can't really get into a book, we can't really get into a world, and it's okay to not finish it. It just wasn't for me. 
Achoo! Yep, there they always come in twos. <laughs> the Wolf and the Woodsman is kind of a retelling of Red Riding Hood. It does have a little bit of a different flair to it, which I appreciate in books. Did I have spit all over my because of sneezing? But I felt like the story kind of dragged, and since it didn't really pull me into the world as quickly as I wanted it to, I stopped reading. I lost interest. I Light Lark. This one was all the rage, super popular, went viral on Book Talk, so I was just like, sure, I will go buy it versus what I normally do, which is go to the library <laughs> because I don't have money to be spending on all of these books. Also, another caveat, all of these books, just about all of these books can be found on Kindle Unlimited. So for 10 bucks a month, you can read to your heart's content. It's a lot cheaper than getting physical books, but if you really want physical books, I highly recommend your library. Your taxes already pay for them, so you might as well use it. If you're a heavy reader like me, you will quickly quickly see your funds dwindle if you are constantly going to Barnes & Noble to buy the book. And then you find out that you don't like the book, and so you wasted all this money, and you have a book on your shelves that you don't even like, which is Light Lark. The concept was okay, but it was poorly written. I could tell that it was a novice writer. I finished it, which is more than I can say for some of other books on this list. So super predictable. I... yeah. Some things just get hyped up, and I don't know why. Shadows and Crowns series. I read almost all the series except for the last book. I only read halfway through it. No, more than halfway. I got three quarters of the way through and I just decided I was tired of trying to push through it. It started off really fun because I really liked the Throne of Glass series and I thought that this could be a nice replacement to it. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Throne of Glass. First two books I thought were great and then it just dragged and the main character still has her character flaw. Like we're on book like four. Can we at at least improve that character flaw and then find a new one that needs improvement. I mean, she's remained static through the entire series and it drove me insane. These Hollow Vows series, I liked them. Do I think that they were very well written? No. I liked them because at the time that I read them, I was very sad. So if you want something to get you out of the sads, that's a book that I would recommend there. This is magic and Faye, because who doesn't love Faye? The Crescent City series is next. It's only, I've only read the first few books that have been written so far because it's still an uncompleted series. It's okay. It was a mmm for me. I continued to read it. I enjoyed it. But at the same time, I feel like there was something just, there was just missing. This is my opinion, okay? If a book has to rely on smut, then it is not well written. If a book is well written, then I don't need the main characters to kiss. I don't, I don't feel like I'm missing it, okay? But if it's not well written, I'm just like, get to it. Because that's the only thing that's interesting of the book. And I feel like Crescent City was kind of like that. I do appreciate that Sarah J Moss seems that be like trying to connect her worlds a little bit. And you see that a lot more in this series than you do in Akatar or Throne of Glass. Next, from Blood and Ash. You can read like the first book and a half and then the rest of them are a complete mess. I say this kindly. I can't look at Honeydew the same. There was a lot of things that made me go mm. in this book and I don't, I don't recommend. You don't, don't, you know what? Don't even start it. Don't even start. The first book was good. Don't even, you just don't even, just don't, just don't start it. Just save yourself the trouble. Next is Her Soul to Take. So this was a book that was just, you know, one of those things that uh, no plot, all spice. Plot was hanging by a thread. <laughs> it was very dark, very, very dark, because the main character, it's a, it's a demon. Doing it with a demon. <laughs> it's not the kind of spice that I like. King's Bride. So this is a standalone book from the Guardians of the Maiden series. It's a prequel per se. I really liked it. Magic, fairies, some spice. Easy to get lost in the world. And it was a really quick read. That's why I recommend it. Speaking of King's Bride, we might as well talk about the Guardians of the Maiden series because I also read that at the same time. So I read the Guardians of the Maiden series first and then I was just like, I want more. So that's why King's Bride happened. So Guardians of the Maiden series, it was very good. I There's a journey, it's like an epic journey, multiple love interests, and then there's the faded love interest. So you cut, you get everything that you would want in a fantasy book in a nice package. It's And it's finished. It's a finished, it's a finished series. So I mean, why not? I liked it. I also read the Plated Prisoner series, the entire series that was out at the time. I'm pretty sure there's another book that's now out that I haven't read. I don't know if I want to read the new book. Let me explain. 
Really liked how in this series, the Fae were very different than your traditional Fae that you would get in other books. So I 100% applaud that. And I loved that it was a retelling of the King Midas story. What I didn't like was it felt like there were so many pages. You could just get to the point faster. It just, it droned on, it dragged a little bit, and it took way too long for our main character to try to get out of. Mm, maybe that's a little bit harsh because it is trauma and sometimes trauma takes a long time to get out of. But it felt to me, I like stronger characters. I didn't like how long our main protagonist was kind of weak. I, I, I get what the author was trying to get to. That sometimes trauma takes a long time to get out of and it will haunt you for a really long time, especially the, as much trauma as our main character has went through. But at the same time, I feel like you can find strength whilst also dealing with the trauma rather than constantly being bogged down by your trauma, but that's just my opinion. So the Play to Prisoner series was like a yes, no, eh, maybe, mm, mostly, mostly yes. Zodiac Academy series. I have a lot of words for this stupid series. Okay, first of all, I liked the series, but I also hated the series. I don't get the bullying trope. I don't like that, but that's only one aspect, okay? What these authors have done to my stupid emotions reading this series is illegal. I do jail right away. I have emotional whiplash from this series, from hating something to then loving them, and then someone dies, and then I'm crying about it, Whereas I was like, why am I crying about this person who died? I was supposed to hate them, and it was what? Shapeshifters, which is kind of cool. Magic, really fun. Oh, I don't even think I read the last book. I probably won't because I don't think I can endure any more emotional trauma from this series. Ah, just whip you around, they do. So loved it, hated it. I will probably read it again. I don't know, maybe I won't. Another book series that was super popular on BookTok that I was just like, sure, why not? I should stop taking recommendations from BookTok. I have been disappointed by more books from BookTok than just going to the library and looking at the library right recommendations, but book talk with the Crave series. It's like a wannabe Twilight series. That being said, I did read almost all of it. The last book of the series, after everything had kind of come to a close, they had this afterthought book kind of that's like, ooh, this is any loose ends that will try to wrap up a little bit. I got like a quarter of the way through that and then I just stopped because I couldn't take it anymore. Couldn't take all the angst. I feel like this entire series was written without an editor. You could take out a good 100 pages pages from each book and just throw them away. They were just run on sentences everywhere. Run on. We started at the top of the page with a thought and we didn't finish that thought until the bottom of the page. And that entire page was one freaking sentence. How many descriptor words do you need in a sentence? I don't need 20. No. The writing structure that really got, got to me. The story was fine. I enjoyed the story for the most part, but the freaking writing was what put me off. But as gargoyles, I mean, if you want, if you like gargoyles, it's, that's, that's fun, I guess. More positive note though, we're gonna go right on to Bow to the Elf Queen. It is an unfinished series. I only read the first book and I loved the first book. It was very easy to jump into the world. It was very easy to relate to the main character and to see the struggle, the back and forth and the twist at the end. The twist was nice. It was a nice twisty twist. Lachlan Feud series is another series that I would recommend. It was really fun. It was really easy to read. It's Scotland, but it's not like Outland. Or Scotland. This is like fairy tale Scotland. Imagine if Scotland and Russia were like right next to each other. That was kind of how it was. I enjoyed seeing these two very different cultures mingling with each other. That was fun. Duel with the Vampire Lord, Dance with the Fae Prince, Deal with the Elf King. All written by Elise Kova. Basically the same story with different covers, but I really liked the story so I didn't mind, which is why I read all of them. <laughs> easy to read, easy to understand. It's candy reading. It's junk food but I like junk food every now and then. Bound to the Fae by Eva Chase. No. I know. It was poorly written. I didn't like the main character. The main character was annoying and I just, sorry, Eva Chase. No. Vicious Lost Boys series. <sighs> Think adult Peter Pan. Very, very adult Peter Pan and very adult Lost Boys. All for one girl. If that's your thing. Was not my thing. Still read a lot of it though. <laughs> I am revealing far too much about myself right now. Taking all of the very graphic Smutty parts.
parts out. I liked the story. You sure about that? That's why? It had some plot to it that I thought was fun. <laughs> Moving on. Because of Vicious Lost Boys, I got on a whole Neverland Peter Pan stint because I liked, I liked the story of Neverland. And so we read Hooked. Slutty Captain Hook. I have so much repenting to do. What's a little different with Hooked though is it doesn't take place in Neverland. It's kind of like a mafia. It's like take Peter Pan, make it mafia and set it in the real world and you have Hooked. There you go. We have The North Wind, which is a standalone book and I recommended it because enemies to lovers trope have a vague memory of everything that was going on. See, I wrote them down as I read them and I just put a plus or minus or a mm -hmm next to it. So at the time I read it, I really liked it. You forgot to say please. The Maze of Shadows series is next, and it was kind of a mm, for me. I liked it, but at the same time, I won't reread it again. Villain gets the girl, which is kind of fun. At the same time, it was just a quick, fun read. Nothing that will make your brain any less smooth. The Demon Queen Trials series was very interesting in that it was kind of set in present day time. I liked that the romantic parts didn't overwhelm the book and it was plot driven. This book on this list came up because it was recommended by my Kindle and I thought, hmm, Kindle can't get me wrong. It did, 100%. It's called Taut Strings and it was bad. I did not like it. Modern day era, lots of rock and roll reference References, which I like. I like the rock and roll references. I like bands. I thought, ooh, cool concept, but there's like no plot. It was just intimacy the whole time. <laughs> Next two books were book talk recommendations. Haunting and Hunting Adeline. Wow. I'm pretty sure this book has trigger warnings. Ah, uh, for good reason. I liked the plot more than everything else that was happening. I wanted more plot. So this is why it's like a hesitant yay recommendation because the other things were overwhelming the plot and I didn't like the other things. I wanted to know the plot. Plot. I wanted more traffickers to go to jail. That's all I'm saying. The idea of someone stalking me though was very scary and I didn't like that. And that's kind of the main premise of the book. So it's like a eh. Man. Recovering from that, uh, we're moving on to The Savage and the Swan. I don't know what was happening in that book. It's a no for me. It's 100% no. I, I kept trying, I pushed through it, I read the whole thing. I have no, I still have no idea what the point of that book was. The whole time I was reading it, it's like I was trying to decode something. It's just like, where are we going with this? Why are we describing this? What? Maybe it's because I'm stupid, but I could not understand anything about that book. <laughs> it's fantasy. and that's all I really know. It's fantastical. And of course, like just about everybody else, I read the Akatar series. I started the Akatar series the year before, but I finished it last year, so that's why it's on this list. I loved the first three books. The third book, which I think is Court of Mist and Fury, is the third book. Or is that the second one? Whichever order that one is, that one was the best book. The last two? Golly. I don't know why we needed a book, Court of Silver Flames, in Nesta's point of view. She's a highly unlikable character, and I feel like we should have had a book from Tamlin's point of view and try to redeem Tamlin first, because I feel like Tamlin has more redeemable qualities than Nesta does, but alas, we got Nesta. And ugh. plus, A Court of Frost and Starlight was just like this little novella. It's one of those books that's just like, oh, you want to stay in the world, but you don't really want to get too involved with anything. So it's just a lot of fluff. Like in anime, they have those filler beach scenes. You get to spend all this time at the beach with with beautiful women wearing next to nothing. You should be grateful. But another thing, like getting back to Court of Silver and Flames, she's 10,000 steps up high. She doesn't have enough strength to go down 10,000 steps. And you know what's even more stupid? She's, she makes it halfway down these steps and realizes she can't go on anymore. So she goes back up. She does basically 10,000 steps in that one little thing. She could have just continued going down. It was just the whole, it was just stupid. I feel like the whole point of that book was just so Sarah J Maas could write about how large Cassian's appendage is. I liked the, the first three books. I liked the story. I liked the plot. I liked where things were going. And then suddenly we just have Nesta and Cassian and it's just, I feel like she ruined Cassian for me. And that's a lot because I loved Cassian. Mm. Keeping in line with Sarah J Maas, I also finished the Throne of Glass series. I started it previously and I finished it earlier this year. Throne of Glass is by far Sarah J Maas's 
Wells's best series she ever wrote. I highly recommend. The plot is beautiful, the world is well written, the characters aren't annoying all the time. Manon Blackbeak, I dressed up as her for Ren Faire, okay? This goes to show you how much I love this series because Manon Blackbeak is my favorite character of the entire series and I think she's introduced in the third book? But she's one of those gray, morally gray characters and you just, you know, we just love a little morally gray character. There's wyverns, magic, elves, humans, witches, Manon Blackbeak. So I'm an actor, okay? Whenever I read a book that I think is super good, I automatically turn to IMDb and just be like, are they making this into a movie? Are they making this into a series? They're doing Akatar before Throne of Glass, which I find super bizarre because Throne of Glass is so much better than Akatar. But I think it's just because Akatar got so popular on Book Talk that they're just like, yeah, let's do Akatar. It's a huge mistake. They should do Throne of Glass first and then cast me as Manon Blackbeak. <laughs> no, they won't do that. I'm not pretty enough. Enough self-deprecating humor side. Something a little different on my list that's not a whole fantasy thing because I, you know, when you get into a reading groove, you kind of stay in that for a while before you're just, you finally get tired of reading the same book with different covers. I read A House with Good Bones by J. King Kingfisher, T. Kingfisher. That was fantastic. It was a very, very quick read and the author gets right to the point. There's not a whole lot of like filler words, which I find in a lot of these books. Like they're, it's like when you're in school and you're typing up an essay and you're just like, oh, I need to write a thousand words and I only, I only have 200 in my brain. So then I just automatically throw in all these random words. I don't know what that voice was, but A House With Good Bones, mystery magic, but it's like in the modern era, Southern hospitality, all the characters were very interesting. They weren't all like just two dimensional filler characters. They had depth to them. I, I really liked it. Made me want to plant some roses. December, I finally decided that I was done reading Fantashmuddy. <laughs> Next, I read The Project by Courtney Summers. This one was modern day time, mystery cults. There was like religious cults. And it was interesting to see how these two sisters who have very different personalities were both drawn in by this same cult because they shared a similar trauma and how easily it is to be drawn into charismatic people with fluffy words. So I liked the message of the story, but at the same time, there were points where I felt like it dragged, it dragged at the beginning it could have been a shorter book. It's like a yeah, no, recommend it. It's a meh. It's a quick read. Won't take a whole lot of your time. It was fairly interesting to just see the dynamic of what cult mentality can do to weak-minded or traumatized hurt individuals. Last book I read last year was another book by Brandon Sanderson, is Tress of the Emerald Sea. And it is by far, I think my favorite read of the entire year. Tress of the Emerald Sea was just this own beast. And I loved that it was written in the point of view of Hoyd, which is a beloved character. I absolutely adore Hoyd. And so getting a book from his point of view was just icing on the cake of my reading year. And the world building, Brandon Sanderson honestly cannot go wrong with his world building. It's pirates, but it's not pirates because they're not on the sea. They are literally on spores, like pollen. It's wild. You have to read it. It's very, very good. I highly recommend it. You won't be disappointed. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you read any of these books or maybe if you disagree with my opinion, I would love to hear it and also love to share any new books that you think that I should read for this coming year. Happy reading, friends. See you next time.